I have to leave around 1130. Okay. Hi, good morning, Morro Bay. Welcome. We are the City of Morro Bay's Tourism Business Improvement District Advisory Board. I'd like to start with establishing a quorum. And Joan Solo is here today. Thank you, Joan. Um, Chris Kosteka is here. Charlie Yates. Stephen Allen. You don't have to say your name because I love you and I'll tell everybody Nancy Dickinson and Amish Patel. Thank you for being here. Um, Isaac is not able to be here today. Um, I'd like to um, begin the meeting and establish this quorum with a moment of silence, please. Thank you. Can we all stand? Face the American flag. Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. First, I'd like to ask, are there any board announcements today? Awesome job on Amgen. Awesome. Yay. Yay. Staff announcements? Of course. We have several. So real quick update on Amgen. Um, great day yesterday. I think it went really well. This slide was done before the event. So just a real quick recap. We had um, our private event last night at Siren, which benefited Bikeslow County. And with their auction items, they raised $5,000. It's the most money they've ever raised, which was really great to hear. So that'll give them a lot more opportunity to do more outreach for local communities. They go out to schools and teach the kids how to bike safely on streets. And they do a lot for our community. So we're glad to have them as a partner this year. First time they've been part of us and Amgen. So we did our VIP two-night stay, which we also did in 2017. 2017, we sold 3,700 roughly dollars in packages. That's two night stays, minimum of $200 a night room. And actually, this number went up. I had it at 11,900 in total night booking, but we actually went over 12,000 in total room bookings for this year. So we substantially grew that. A lot of that was repeat customers. They had come in 17 and wanted to come back. So. Again, you know, talking about the constant idea of things, you know, growing and repetition and repeat. That's a really good example of how that works. Quick update on the hotel photos for the website. We had to hire a new photographer, just so you guys know, but it's moving forward and it should be done at the end of next week, which is great. There's a new um, listing on SoCal.com. Anybody that has a business can list on there. And now they have an addition where you can put one photo and a small description for no cost. So I'd recommend everybody, anybody you talk to, let them know to update their um, listing on SoCal.com so we can have a lot more listings for our city. Quick update on our outreach for VRs and RVs. We are having two workshop meetings here on the 22nd and on the 30th of May from 5 to 7 p.m. You're welcome to attend, but it's not required as a board member. And these are going to be roundtable discussions where we really have just an open dialogue and hear from the owners in the community on what they want, what works, what would help them, and just have a good open dialogue. and. Uh, Lori Keller will be helping us facilitate that, and myself and Scott Collins and Scott Graham will be there from the city as well. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> we had uh, SoCal did their annual destination management strategy, and I'm going to go through this pretty quick. I know some of you were there, some of you were unable to attend, and what they did was they rolled out the 28 draft recommendations for the county and where they see things that need to be improved or grown in the county. This does not necessarily mean that they are going to champion and push these out, but they're recommendations for the county and we'll have to see what groups step out, up on the different things that uh, need to be championed. But it was really interesting. The ones that I put in yellow are things that really directly relate to us and our new strategic plan for outdoor activities. They want to create an incubator situation and grow outdoor experiences here, which is really great. Bike tourism is a priority for them, and the countywide trail system is also a priority for them. Under food and beverage experience, the Culinary Art Campus, what they're talking about doing is something similar to the, what they have in Napa Valley. 
And the recommendation is to maybe either with Cuesta or Cal Poly really bring in um, a situation that grows the culinary arts, which I'm really excited about that. That could really step us up as a county. That's super exciting. A couple other things that I want to mention on, on page two. So workforce development, obviously all these will benefit everybody in our county, attracting higher quality talent and developing talent that's already here, workforce transportation in and around the county, workforce housing and customer service as well. Under industry development, they um, are actively looking at the conference center and possibility of having two or three conference centers in the county. Airlift development is still a top priority for them. Ground transportation has to go with the airlift development and then growing the international visitors. One of the ways they're talking about growing the international visitors is bringing on a secondary person under uh, with Michael Wambolt to do travel sales, which is great. Under placemaking, this is what they're looking at for the county. What, what do they really want to like establish and grow? And Morro Bay Waterfront was on there, which was really great, and it was really the only direct tie to any one of the destinations. So, I mean, I, I feel pretty proud of that. They're looking at it and re recognizing that our waterfront and the power plant area is a huge opportunity for the county and the possibility of growing that. So, again, how that's going to champion and who's going to take that on is question two, but this is a really good start. And then sustainable tourism, they're, they want to look at the tourism management side and just overall sustainability on tourism as far as whether it's events or just people coming and going and how do we really help visitors grow to maintain and keep our communities very sustainable. We're uh, doing our launch right now for the RFP for the wine promotion for September and October. Those close in uh, late July. I've already had some respondents, which is really great. Um, one thing that just sidebar, and Megan will talk a little more about it later, but we did an analysis of all of our e-blasts for this last year, and our top performer was the wine offer extended by popular demand, which is really interesting because I know we had a discussion about this either last month or the month before about how do we know that they're really interested in the wine or not, and so I, thought, I was glad to hear that, that they really liked it, and we had on that offer a 72% click-through rate, which is really very, very high. Oh, Megan's turn. So just going to go through um, some quick marketing highlights. Um, as far as the website goes, the traffic was up 18% in April compared to last year. And the top view content this month was the citywide yard sale. Um, as far as website bookings, there were 284,000 hotel searches, and that resulted in a projected 1,595 room nights booked. For our digital campaign for April and May, we're doing the Soar into Spring Savings, which is the spring passport directed at outdoor activities and families. Um, room nights booked based on this campaign was 435, and the hotel revenue generated is 73,000 based on the DARA numbers. So three articles this month um, resulted from our hosted visiting journalists. Um, there were, they were Spring in Tomorrow Bay, which is all about visiting Morrow Bay in the spring, what to do when you're here. Um, we also had a couple golfers come in that played Morrow Bay Golf Course, and they wrote a piece for Arizona Golfer. And then the um, Beyond Yosemite, five stunning state parks off the beaten vacation path. And that one actually was picked up by 16 different publications, has over 150,000 views, and they are... Um, it was shown in places like Lexington, Detroit, LA, Colorado Springs, Twin Cities, and Chicago, which is pretty great. So back to the e-blasts. Um, this year we sent out 57 campaigns, and that equated to 800, or nearly 844,000 total emails. The average open rate for those was 21%, which is up 2% from last year. The top two performing campaigns, um, or the top performing campaign, as Jennifer mentioned, was the wine offer extended by popular demand with the 72% click-through rate. 
and the most open emails were information on the citywide yard sale and Amgen is back in Morro Bay. 43% of the emails were open on mobile devices and 57% on desktop. And the email list grew by 6% over last year. And hopefully we can keep growing that. And then just a little update on the hashtag program and how we're using that so far. Um, so hashtag moral vacation has been used across all social media platforms on all of our um, posts. And then it's also been included in the two press releases for this month, looking for unique, take a fun and funky hashtag moral vacation, as well as five great reasons to check in Monday and stay all week on your hashtag moral vacation. Also are using hashtag outdoor goals on sh video shorts that we've been putting on Facebook and on Instagram. Um, if you haven't seen them, you should check them out. They're kind of cool. They focus on surfing, biking, canoeing, and so far they have over 23,000 views and they reached over 5, 50,000 people, I'm sorry, on Facebook alone. Pretty cool. Any questions? I, I have a question about Adara. I want to say it right. Um, I'm wondering, uh, we show um, numbers that come in for campaigns that come through. Does Adara have a tracking system that's cumulative for all of our campaigns? In other words, do they have, each, each month, It'll say like uh, the wine. The wine thing resulted in fourteen thousand or seventy-three thousand dollars in revenue. So, if we are tagging all of our campaigns with them, then we should have a cumulative amount of revenue or an, a cumulative amount of rooms that resulted in our efforts here. The reason why that's kind of important is because we constantly talk about measurable goals and how to measure what we're doing here. And I'm just wondering if they have that that we can add to our report. Good morning. Hi. Mary Ann Stansfield with Mental Marketing. Um, great question, Joan. So um, in the marketing report that you get monthly, um, it shows uh, it, in, um, <clears throat> in respect to the campaign. Um, so this month's report was for April, and this campaign started in April. So what we show for this campaign is just the April results. Next month, when I show the May report, it'll show the cumulative of this particular campaign, the April and May results, um, you know, total, which is for this specific campaign. Um, we can, however, show results year to date. Um, for campaigns that is possible to do. Um, what we did for April this month is show the cumulative results from July 1 through the end of April for the website numbers. If you, I don't know if you noticed that on the, on the report. So we can do it however you want. Um, the answer is yes and yes. We can do whatever you want. And Marianne, we are doing some of that. We do it at your six month review. We do it at our annual meeting as well. And then we do it at the year end. Okay, because it's good to do a side-by-side -side comparison with the, TO, the actual TOT numbers that are coming in, right, to see where we're, how we're tracking and trending. But our TOT report that we review is March, so it's not going to, it would be one year, one month behind. Correct. But we would eventually be able, at the year end, to sure. catch up and right. see cumulatively how accurate we were. So that could be like in the annual report, sure. Well, yeah. yeah, or even at six months, we could track or, know, or the first months. five months or something, right? Right. So we could update ourselves as we go along. And do like side by side, here's mm -hmm. a TOT, here's occupancy, here is so forth, the key performance indicators, and then these are the results from our ads, and these are the results from, yeah, the, because from the site. Yeah, because I don't know what you guys think, but that seems really important, right? So, okay. Thank you for One of the things I enjoy is, you know, that I use a lot are quarterly reports. And so a quarterly report, you know, for me, it also is what we yeah. present to the investors and owners right. that I do. And so that, for me, would be a really a good way to do it. I'm, I'm happy that, to do it however work. you guys prefer. You know, if you guys prefer, think work, I think that would be great. You know, we can do quarterly. Yeah, great. It might be, so it'll, it'll be like a month out so that we can do, you know, and like when we get the numbers, so... You know, yeah. Okay. Thank you. That was my only question. 
Next up, we have the consent agenda, and we have, oh, sorry, public comment. I always seem to forget red. Sorry, I didn't mean to forget anybody out there in the public. We'd like to open the floor. Good morning. My name is Robert Davis. Uh, I want to thank you all for the way you supported the Amgen event yesterday. Um, and I especially want to thank Jennifer for turning the event into dollars into the hotelier's pockets. That was great. Uh, watching everything as it moved through the day yesterday, it was obvious that the whole community work together to make this a success. And I want to thank Charlie for both representing the Inn at Morro Bay in the VIP tent and also representing the Maritime Museum with that special unique gift that we gave to the stage winner. And I know it was it, my honor. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for choosing us. Sure. And I know that it's hard to measure the return on investment for an event like this. But last night when I watched the television coverage, every time Phil Liggett said, and the tour is going to pull into Morro Bay, I just, I, I had this thrill hearing Morro Bay on international television. So it was great. And, and I hope we can continue to do this. So thanks. I was so, um, so proud myself and the images that I was able to watch last night um, of Morro Bay and uh, just the entire thing was just, it, it really was. I mean, it was breathtaking and I, I think that we also had that drama, you know, at the end of the race, which also, you know, brings it, makes it very kind of uh, exciting for everyone. So, uh, but very proud of everyone who put it together and mm -hmm. I loved the hashtag Morro Bay sign. Everyone's getting out underneath it. So it really came together. We also have, um, still to come on Amgen, is all the Bob Roll stuff. So that was last night, and we did inter interviews with him talking about Morro Bay, and so those videos will be posted fairly soon, which we'll get more play on that as well. One more thought on that. Um, my wife last night, Cindy and I went to the event, and we took a picture of ourselves under the hashtag Morro Bay. The Jen took the picture for us, uh, posted that, and within an hour that had the most clicks on our website of anything we've said all year. Wow. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name's Alex. Good morning, my name's Alexis. I'm from Blooming Rose Day Spa on the Embarcadero. Um, I was curious, and I don't, I, it was amazing. I was there as a, you know, bystand. Or, um, but as a business person on the Embarcadero, I had no idea what was going on. I wasn't invited to be a participant in anything. Um, a couple of people that are the businesses down there, we weren't, it was, it's kind of hard to get information about us being included in stuff. And I um, was approached to do some massages for some of the riders and then they decided that they were gonna bring their own people and so I didn't know if you guys were aware of that or if how we can kind of bring, you know, local businesses into this so that we're all kind of, because I mean, even if I was not under construction, I wouldn't have been able to do any massages yesterday because of the screaming and the yelling and the, the sirens and things like that. So for me, I would like to be incorporated in these wonderful events and it was totally awesome and rad and I'm so proud of the city and, um, but I would like to be a part of these things. And so I'm curious how we can be a part of it and um, if I'm just, you know, like missing out on signals or something like that, I don't really know. Um, I did start a newsletter for the the business owners of the Embarcadero so that everybody can kind of communicate. And I spent two days walking around and introducing myself and saying, "Hey, I don't I don't want you to buy anything. I just want us to all work together and cross promote." So I'm here because I, I want to be able to go back and say, "Hey, we were heard, and we get to be a part of it. And this is how it's going to go." So um, I just kind of wanted to throw that in there and see if maybe we can start working with you guys. Thank you. Communication is key, you know, uh, across all of 
tourism and business and you know this collaboration with the with visit Slocal with tourism with the city um, there's a lot of people to get that word out but you're correct and we need to to always try to remember what how are we getting the word out um, the word from this board was really to tourism and not really so much to business I know the chamber had a booth and they were they were working on that um, but these are things for us to remember for other events not just a big one like this but things like the citywide um, sale like the upcoming marine swap meet at the end of June uh, Harbor Fest these are things that affect the entire community and so it's really important especially when we want to get volunteers and involvement and make it a positive thing for everybody so I really appreciate the comment Jen may have something to say on that, but um, there's so many levels of this event. But yeah, that probably was a missed level, um, us included. When we up there, we didn't realize there'd be local booths. Um, so that'd be good to know for next time. But we're new to the community. So agreed, we can do better in that regard. Well, I mean, um, for the future. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm, so, I'm Italian, so I'm used to screaming anyway, so I apologize. Um, like, I wanted to see if, you know, in the future, me and my massage therapist, we could have, like, a booth, and we could do, like, quick tune-ups in between. Um, my background is sports therapy in massage, so, you know, and my whole family rides, and they were really bummed that they didn't even know what was going on. <laughs> they would have came up. Um, but these are... It, the thing is, is that it's. I don't want to take away from these wonderful things that are coming sure. in. But for me, it's just like even with the avocado and margarita festival. There's certain hours where I can't book people because there's you know a parade going down, right. and that's fine as long as I'm aware of it. And I would love to be a part of it. And I and, know that there's a lot of people that. And would. we totally appreciate your comments, but I do have to cut you off because public comment so is closed. Sorry. No, it's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Just to add to that, um, the chamber is working with rec the rec department and tourism to figure out how to best get information out about events so that there's advance notice. Of course, I mean, we, we blanketed the businesses, but it's easy to miss things, and uh, we do our best to communicate well in advance, especially something as spectacular and as big as Amgen. And of course, um, you know, coming from Santa Cruz, where we had 160 public events, I mean, it's very important to find that balance between events that draw resources into the community um, and then the impacts that it has on the local businesses. So we, we certainly keep that in mind when we put something on like this. Can I ask, did the Morro Bay Chamber um, communicate to the business owners? Mm -hmm. Okay, so without saying it's important to be a member of the Morro Bay Chamber if you're not already. Moving on to consent agenda. Has everyone had a chance to review the minutes? Because I have one, one correction myself. The correction I have is the April minutes from the April meeting. It shows that we had Nancy and Isaac were not present, but they actually did attend. We had a full board. Is that correct? This was the April 18th annual meeting. We had a full board. Okay, so she was. He might have showed up. Was he was there right at the beginning? Anyway, that was. I knew that you were there for part of it, but yeah. not the entire part. So I just wanted to make that correction. Otherwise, I'm I'm good. I I have a quick question on A one, which is the approval uh, March in March. Um, there was the vacation rentals conversation, and we had said that we would get a. a report from the and I all of a sudden her name has passed me by this is jet lag I'm sorry what was her Lori Keller thank you oh my gosh uh, that we would get a report from Lori Keller but I think she probably gave it to Jennifer and that's what you reported on at the beginning when you reported on vacation rental outreach is that how that worked because it the was, outreach hasn't happened yet it's happening May 22nd May 30th okay because we had in our so it's wonky because in our motion well it doesn't matter because the motion stands so we had said that we would get a full report back in May and then in September we had given two deadlines and so um, I just yeah okay 
entertaining a motion of the consent agenda? All of it. So moved. Second. I'll second. Okay. Call on a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passing on. Moving on. We're to business items. Jennifer. March TOT was slightly down. Of course, we had Easter last year um, during March, which was really unusual. Uh, this year, it fell April 21st. So we had that last weekend of March, and Easter was Sunday, uh, April 1st. So that's the big difference that we see in there. We did have our restaurant passport going this year. We redeemed a little over 300. It's very equal to what we did last year. Uh, that's really an estimate on redemption, just so you know. I mean, we're at the will of the restaurants to actually track them. Um, so I, I really don't have a lot more to tell you than just Easter moved so much. Spring break moved it so much, I should say. Thank you. Do, you. do you know how many rooms were added to the inventory in the county last year? Anyone know that? Not off the top of just, my head. Yeah, no. just in general. Anyone have like a guesstimate? I'm just wondering because... I heard it last week. You heard it last week? I can't week remember. The destination summit. I don't remember. Uh, oh, at the destination summit. Are you talking about the county? Yeah, I'm talking about throughout the county because we're softer. It looks like we're softer when you look at the star report. It looks like we're softer than anyone else. You know, San Simeon came back. Highway 1. On, well, but they, they had the same... Highway 1 was closed for us. Highway 1 was closed for them. Easter was in April for them. Easter was in April for us. And I'm just wondering why we're so soft. Like, where are those hotels were at? Maybe something opened in San Simeon or something? I don't think so, but, you know, maybe Cambria? Anyone know? Okay, because I'm trying to figure out why, you know, comparatively to the other cities, we're soft. They had the same, especially San Simeon, although they had the furthest to come up, right, because of their impact, but... But their ADR, they killed it. When you when you look at the star report, they killed it. So, anyways, okay. Hmm. Public comment. Seeing none, I'm going to move on to B two. Good morning. Hello everyone, um, appreciate the opportunity to give you at least a brief presentation uh, and update on the city's wayfinding um, sign program. Um, we, uh, let's see, where's the, oh, uh, uh, okay, <laughs> I'm uh, Scott Graham, I'm the community development director for the, uh, for the city, for those of you that don't know me. A um, little background on the wayfinding effort. Um, it's been identified in several of the city's um, uh, recently adopted documents, including the Downtown and Waterfront Strategic Plan and the Economic Development Strategic Plan. Um, it's been identified in those documents as a goal and implementing item. Also briefly discussed in your uh, Tourism Strategic Plan. Um, We've uh, partnered uh, through the 4MB program with the Chamber to do outreach related to the Wayfinding Sign program, and we've um, made contact with the four economic uh, areas in town. That's North Main, uh, Quintana, the downtown uh, business folks, and the waterfront business folks, and we've sort of done a, an ongoing tour for a few, several months, um, bringing, getting ideas from those areas and then putting them forward. And then eventually we entered in, in February into a contract with uh, Pierre Rademacher of Rademacher Designs to come up with some, uh, with a draft um, design um, for the, uh, for the signs. And we're still in that draft sign program um, process, but uh, we had some preliminary uh, sign designs that came out, and I'm going to pass those out to you right now. Right. 
I do a slide with this on it, but um, I didn't have the actual digital copy, so it's a little fuzzy, hence the reason I was passing out copies. All right, so what you see in, uh, in the exhibit is um, on the left-hand side is kind of the larger um, wayfinding sign design, and that would be things like along Highway uh, 1 or maybe 41. Um, and there's a kind of a hierarchy that's done with these, and you don't really want to have you pointing to any more than about three things on the highway level because you're driving 65 miles an hour. And then you go to the next level, which would be more in, our, in, in town, once you come down like Morro Bay Boulevard or Main Street, and you can put about four things on those types of signs. Um, one of the things we're also talking about adding to these um, and is in the works is uh, identifying the economic area that you're in, um, so branding that a little bit. So maybe it's North Main, maybe it's Quintana, maybe it says downtown at the bottom, um, so you know where you're at when you're lo at looking at that wayfinding sign. Um, the two on the left would be, um, again, vehicle-oriented um, wayfinding. Um, these are not dissimilar to what you see in St. Louis. They implemented their wayfinding sign program starting about two years ago, and you see those um, signs deployed, and I think they're mostly fully deployed now. Um, you go over to the right one, and you have that pedestrian-oriented one. Um, see, St. Louis also has pedestrian-oriented way wayfinding, which is nice. Okay. All right. <laughs> Well, I think most of you have, you're holding it, and I'll continue to talk, and they can get it back up there. Um, so again, we'll have pedestrian-oriented um, wayfinding. Uh, I think that's important. Um, and then, um, and then uh, we have the parking uh, wayfinding signage um, on the far right of the handout that I provided you. Um, you see the, the color of the posts and the design of the, of the support posts are taken from some of the uh, street lights that we have in the downtown, those green ones that we have. Um, that was kind of what the design theme was, was based on to provide some continuity looking around at our surroundings and so not putting something there that doesn't match. Um, and so that was kind of where that design option came from. We also, this is an example from Pasadena we were looking at um, that uh, shows um, a sign that you would put on a post that's more of a, a like a directory oriented sign. It would have many diff different things on it. You put it on one side of a post, it says you are here, and then, sh and then you're looking forward, and that's what's in front of you. You would put another one on the back side that's the opposite, right? And um, then it would point you in the other direction and show you the stuff that's up the street from you or, or behind you, depending on what way you're looking. Um, and so we're going to, um, Pear is working on uh, a design for this, and I expect to get something either by um, maybe the end of the business tomorrow or the beginning of next week. Um, we're also looking at um, deploying uh, or uh, drafting up a sign you saw in back one. You saw in here we have the city seal at the top. Um, we also are having them put together a design with the city logo that you see in the bottom right hand of the slide there. Um, so, uh, you know, so we we got an opportunity to look at and see what that might look like. Um, as I said, these are these are not dissimilar to this um, the sign designs and styles that you see in uh, in the city of San Luis. Um, city of Paso uh, has similar signs approved. They haven't deployed yet. Um, they just got a new cost estimate for theirs. Um, they're going to have probably double the amounts of signs that we have, but they'll look a little bit similar to, the, to this as well, which is actually kind of nice, because um, you have multiple jurisdictions having somewhat similar wayfinding signs in their communities, which is nice. My understanding is, um, is Grover Beach is just took San Luis's sign design and put Grover Beach on it, uh, and is looking to do that as well. So uh, you might get a few of the cities out there with somewhat similar looking signage for wayfinding, which I think is nice from a regional standpoint. Um, so. Again, we'll be getting some uh, additional, we're in the middle of this process right now, we're getting some additional um, sign designs that will that'll be forthcoming in the, in the next week or so. Uh, we're also, one of the things we're looking at probably as we finish up the regular wayfinding sign is to look at uh, possible sign improvements for our Highway um, 1 and 41 signage. Um, that's part of your uh, strategic plan as well, uh, one of the, the go-do items in there, implementation items. Um, and possibly what you would be looking at is you see regular highway signage and then you could have smaller signage on it that says beach access or be beach parking off this way. And this is just a couple of examples. This isn't all of them, but um, we did go do an inventory of the signs that are along Highway 1 and looked at options of what that might look like. Um, um, and then we need to engage Caltrans for this. So on this sign, you could have something that says downtown or waterfront. We don't 
have that right now. Um, a good example of you know where you're missing that is you would don't know that those things are down there. Or you can get to the waterfront by going down Morro Bay Boulevard um, if you're on Highway One. Um, and then here, you're, when you're coming uh, south into town, San Jacinto is beach access parking there, right? You go down there and there's the city parking lot, but it doesn't tell you that. Um, the sign also doesn't have beach access on it, um, which would be nice. That's okay. It's probably nice for people that like the hidden gem there, but um, doesn't really tell the story to folks driving through the town. Um, so, I mean, you, and if you're going south to north and you're, you're rolling, you don't know we have a beach until you're out of, out of the city. Um, and there's no signage that points you there. So uh, I, think, I think both this board is recognized that um, as has uh, a number of other planning efforts um, to this end, as has the um, process we're going through with the chamber and the, the 4MB process. Uh, our business um, community has expressed that um, in every single one of the four areas is that that's a, that's something that's lacking so that'll be sort of a, um, another additional effort on top of the wayfinding thing is to get some of those beach access signs on the highway one signs and I know that was something that this board was interested in and came out of your strategic plan as well my last slide uh, this is our next steps um, we're going to be de we're developing the, uh, an alternate design with the city logo um, uh, the important part is where do you put them? So we have to develop the map. <laughs> you know, where are we putting them? What way are they facing? What's on them? You know, we have a list of things that, that we want to point people to. Um, worked with, uh, with Jennifer and Erica Crawford with the chamber um, to develop that list and provided that to Pierre. Um, he's working on the map. Uh, and, uh, and what would be on those signs in those locations to give us a draft. Probably won't have that for a couple of weeks. Um, but once we do, then um, we'll be taking a look at it, uh, revising the draft. Um, showing it to our planning commission and city council. Once we have the map in place and the draft design, we'll be able to go out with the RFP, uh, probably doing that in parallel while we're going through the review process with our advisory boards and the city council. Um, so we can get it set up for um, fabrication and installation. Um, so I'm not going to wait till it, we're done. I'm going to go forward and have it ready to deploy. Um, ideas that maybe, we, I'd, hopefully we can get this up at least maybe at the, towards the end of summer, but at least it would be you know, something for that area that would be fantastic. So that's what we're trying to do. Um, you know, that's the, that's the goal um, anyhow. And then once you do that, we got to install the signs. And so part of the RFP will be a, a short turnaround time for installation and making sure that the folks that we um, engage for that service um, can, can, can hit those timelines. So um, with that, I'm, I'll end my presentation. And I'm certainly happy to, to take any questions that you might have. Um, did you say that... You're doing another direction with that logo bug instead of the city seal? It, it, we're going to have a mock up uh, an example of what that might look like. You, because of the colors that are involved in it, you know, the sign scheme would look, the uh, you know, color would have to look a little different, right? Because it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't work very well with the blue that's sort of right. there. Uh, yeah. So they would have to come up with some, something, something. It's also different. square. I mean, this, it, this, this nice curve works because you've got a circle underneath it. There's a square there. Yeah, so, so the, 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 I think the city of San Luis' signs have like squared off edges. Um, mm -hmm. You know, this is, you know, nicer having the rounded edges with the, with the round seal, um, you know, and sort of the kind of wavy thing since we're beach oriented and the colors are kind of beachy. That was sort of the <laughs> idea there. Um, so, but the, if we go with the, um, uh, the logo and look at that example, it'll have to be, um, again, something slightly yeah. different. Yeah, that's going to be it's going to be tough to work with with the with these color selections. And the other uh, question is about the font. Um, this question to Jen and mental marketing is this: um, I love how you're setting up a system here, and um, how you can extend that system to all sorts of different usage, including the font. Is that font uh, uh, being used in anything else? Um, but any of the other materials? Not that I'm aware of. And this font's actually going to change somewhat because of the at least the spacing on it. It's a little close together, um, and we yeah. and so the revisions that we're going to get back from uh, Pierre will have font so that you kind of can see the R and the F kind of kind of blend a little together. It's kind of hard to read. That's not that's not ideal. Um, you want to have clear separation so you can read it because again. You're on the highway, you're going down the road at 65 miles yeah. an hour, you need to be able to read it. It does have some character, though. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's that trade-off that you're looking for. Yeah. So, it, you know, because one of the things I think is so important is for us to really start making sure that everything that we're putting out um, as a tourism board, but also from the chamber, is unified in its look and feel so that we're not continually scattering our message. 
and um, not that not that this has to be exactly within a, a design system that we've set up, but I think it should fit with the overall brand strategy that we have for how we're communicating visually. So um, that's that's just a request going forward is to okay. make sure that we're looking at this not in isolation from everything else, but with everything else. Um, so, so sort of part of the reason why you know. Uh, Jennifer's involved with the process, as is Erica with the chamber. So we didn't want to be going off half-cocked in any direction that was sort of contrary to what, say, you guys are working on or the chamber's working on. Um, we, don't want to, we didn't want to duplicate efforts. We wanted to make sure we were all knew what each other were doing and those types of things, why the, yeah. we have members. Um, but these are nice. And, it's a nice, clean system. Um, and, yeah, the font selection is, is tough because you want it to be legible and have and not just be like Helvetica, you know. So. You, want, you want something unique, yeah, I, I agree. I mean, all of this, all, all of this, you know, works towards sort of placemaking, right? And that's one of the reasons why we wanted yeah. to put the economic centers on the bottoms of the, so, so those areas in town, because they are pretty, you know, separate and distinct, you know, can kind of own that. And that can be that starting of hopefully trying to brand some of those areas. Um, we've been talking with them now for several months and, you know, they're interested in, but not wholly engaged. I'm hopefully hoping this, this will help some of that. So they're yeah. like, oh, we have something that, that, that's us. And, and maybe yeah. that gets them to the next step and looking at, you know, them looking at themselves more holistically and maybe, you know, we can come up with, you know, what's the next step to better tell their story because um, I think we talked to them a lot about it and they'll get a lot of nodding heads, but they're just kind of not really sure where they want to mm -hmm. be. So um, anyway, this is, this is a step hopefully in that and, and it'll, you know, sort of instigate some, uh, some more interest. And, in and my last comment line. is always test it with the sign that's going to have the most content. Um, and how are you making the prioritization of what goes on a sign and what doesn't? Um, you know, there's going to be a lot of, of fight for this placement. And so I'd like to see at, in one of your next directions, which is the sign that's got, going to have to have to have the most content and how are you going to handle that? Because that may break the system. So, um, yeah, I understand what you're saying. And I, I, thankfully, we're, we've, we've hired somebody that's, that's really good at this and been doing this for all, quite a while. Um, so he's got some, some decent ideas on it. Um, but my um, point is that he's, who's deciding what goes on the signs? Well, I, he, he, will be, he will have to execute whatever content is given to him. We, so how are you making the so prioritization? We've, we've given him a list of those items. And we have to look at, so the, the map will sort of tell what's on the signs. Because it's a hierarchy. Um, you have to get into town, and then as you're coming into town, you're at the top of the hill, say, if you came in on Morro Bay Boulevard, and so there's things that can, that can push you over to City Hall, that can push you down to the waterfront, and then there's signage from there that can push you to parking and the rock and those other types of things. Um, the golf course, you know, the beach, um, and those areas. So um, it's, it will be a little tricky getting all of the things on We're not going to be able to get all of the things that we identified on our signs probably on the signs because you can only have so many arrows on each one. So what's the um, criteria that you're using to make decisions of what goes on a sign and what doesn't? Because you're going to get a lot of pressure to put a lot of different we're not things get, on I don't it. think we're going to get a lot of pressure. I think, I think the things that we have in town um, are, I, I think the waterfront's clearly an area. The rock is clearly an area. Um, we, uh, the list that we came up with was pretty comprehensive. We also, we also realized, and Pierre said, hey, I don't think we can put all of these things on the signs. And so we understand that. Um, yeah. we, we wanted to put together the list of what all the things that you would want to go look at, you know, and that's why we kind of each did it independently and then compared notes um, uh, so that, you know, we weren't missing anything so that we had sort of the, um, the playing field and then the art is identifying, yeah. you know, where they need to go. So that's going to be part and parcel to, um, again, where we put the signs. Uh, so the I, I'd love to see that list of what you're being asked to put on signs. Because this is just my experience of, um, this is actually in Santa Cruz in the 1970s, <laughs> is that we did all of this work and then we went to do them and we, this ridiculous sign was created on Ocean Street <laughs> that had, like, everything. And it was, like, it was... It was a farce. At the end, there was so much information on it, and the type was so small that it had become, you know, unusable. That, that, so, that was the issue with the existing deployment of the wayfinding sign that we have in town. You, you can't read them if you're in a vehicle driving down. I, 
Some of you may know we have them. Some of you may not. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but you have to stand in front of them. They're, they're, they're oriented like they're for vehicles, but you really have to be walking to read right. them. The font is really small. So I, so I hope you see I'm actually trying to be your friend here because, uh, you know, as you get more towards implementation here, I'm... I'm sure I'm sure it'll be fine, but I I, I saw what happened at another city uh, many years ago, and just was trying to make sure we don't get in the same situation. It, it will be just like this again. Highway oriented signs will have no more than three items on it. The ones in the, going down to the island will have no more than four, which is why we can't put everything on them, and we have to be strategic about it, and it is a little bit of a, where are we going as we filter folks through the downtown, if that's where you're coming into town, maybe you're coming in somewhere else, but same idea applies. You're focused, coming into the downtown, you're, you're filtering out from there to the waterfront, you're going south or north, what are in those locations, and that's how the sign hierarchy sort of works. Yeah. Um, and again, we came up with a pretty large list of things, but we all, we're aware that we're not going to be able to put all of them on there. But again, it will be like that. We won't have more than four on any given sign in, in the downtown waterfront awesome. areas. Northmore. Thank you. On. Scott, on your alternate design with the... I just want to caution, San Diego made a mistake when they did that and businesses change. And you've got to redo that sign over and over if their business listing on the, <laughs> that's a that's, that's a great point and one that we've we've discussed already. We're not going to put businesses say it got really dicey and very expensive. For yes, and we're we're not going to do that just for that reason. I mean, I I'm, I review all of the business licenses that come into the city um, because I want to know who's coming into the city uh, and. Uh, and there's a lot, and a lot of them move. We get a lot of them that move around um, from locations, so that would not be feasible to do something like that. So it'll be more of a, it should, it'll, instead of, you can only have a few things on these, that, that's the signage maybe when you're walking around that can show you all of the different things that are in front of you going that way or in front of you going that way. And um, we'll probably deploy them in the downtown area and the waterfront, probably less useful in other areas, but in those places it makes sense. And you can show a larger area that's several streets wide on it that can show you where, you know, um, where, where things are. So, things yeah. Yeah, so we can give you a little more of the detail in the, in the items that we put together in our list um, that maybe don't make it on these, but, you know, would make it on something that's broader. So that's kind of the idea. Uh, another thing that's happening, you know, the uh, Waze, you know, MapQuest, mm -hmm. you know, Google, uh, it's really important that when someone wants to find something that we're, our signs match what, and right now there's a, a couple issues, and I'm, I'm talking about the Inn at Morro Bay and the State Park. South Bay Boulevard and Highway 1 don't have correct signage based on what the computer tells you. So that gets people lost constantly. And as a hotelier within a state park, I can tell you how frustrating it is for guests that aren't able to find the state park because <laughs> Waze and Google it doesn't get you there because South Bay Boulevard isn't on Highway 1. There's no signage. So I brought this up before, but I, I wasn't part of your group, and I'm sorry. Oh. I'm bringing it up kind of... Okay. 11th hour, but it's something to look at. It's South Bay Boulevard, Highway 1 at that intersection. Um, it does get tourists confused. It doesn't say going to Morro Bay, and it does. It goes right into the state park. So that's just, that's a comment. But good work. Really yeah. hard work. A lot of, a lot of thought has gone into this, so looking forward to seeing it. Scott, I have um, just a couple things. We mentioned beach access a lot, and I'm assuming the ones that are going to be down towards the water will be like beach bay access somehow, like a little whatever it is that you're going to do. And then yeah. I know that Caltrans can be, how do I say this, slow moving and resistant to change. So your push for Caltrans is admirable in my eyes because we've been pushing for change to those signs for about 20 years and literally if you can get it done I'm going to personally buy you a plaque <laughs> um, so that's right I'm going to buy you a sign um, but if we can't get it done um, maybe we can just at least get them to put those little international symbols at the bottom for lodging mm -hmm. restaurant hiking I mean that is the change that we've been really trying to get for mm -hmm. 20 years is that it has the little person in a bed, little hiker, and yep. you know, a little restaurant sign, because all it shows is gas. So right now, we are a city with a bunch of gas. <laughs> so <laughs> I think that it would be really great for us to have the little hiker, right? <laughs> so yeah, again, if you can get it done, I'm willing to go buy you a plaque. 
Okay, so if that's any kind of motivation, <laughs> I'll make sure your name is spelled right in everything. Um, and then, um, is there any chance that um, on the um, signs that are uh, pedestrian directed, uh, that we might be able to have morobay.org on there? Uh, somewhere, like down at the bottom, like visitor information, morobay.org, because we're guiding everything back there. So while you're French or whatever you are, or German or British or Indian or Australian, and you you will have your, I mean, I was just in a foreign country for $10 a day. You've got all your data and all, your, all the works on your telephone. And literally, that's what I used to guide me around Istanbul with 26 million people. Um, and, I, and then I would find the sign and I'd be like, oh yeah, right, I'm going in the right direction. Um, or I would look at something and then I would Google the name that was on the sign so I could translate it out into English and understand better. So having uh, the dot .org on there for those pedestrian signs, specifically in those visitor serving areas, I think would be really important, even if it were smaller and kind of somewhere at the bottom, but just a thought for you as you move forward. I'm certainly happy to take a look at that. I think, you know, it, it, I, think for, I think that really makes a lot of sense on the sort of directory type sign that we, that, that we were mm -hmm. talking about with the, with the larger map on it too. Um, I, I think that is probably something we for sure can do. And this will have to give us some thought more on, the, uh, you know, on these signs. So. Yeah, that dot org transfers over into dollars, which transfers into the city budget, which is super important. So, I just wanted to throw that out there. Okay. I wasn't, I hadn't heard the dot org, so I just wanted to point that out. Thank okay. you. Any public comment? Hi. Um, so, along with your idea, um, John, I was curious if there may be a possibility, and this is just kind of throwing it out there, but you know those little like uh, barcodes that you can scan with your phone? How about incorporating um, a page on the website for Morro Bay where it's like an interactive map, and so it'll direct you to where you're going, and that way you can add in more information about where they're actually physically at in the area. So if you go and you're at this sign, you put your phone over it, it scans and it tells you the, the, the inn of Morro Bay is over here to your right and over here is the golf course. Maybe something along those lines and you can really incorporate many different things and then you can have less stuff on your sign and it's just like a little barcode and it could be a fun millennial type thing. Thanks. Any further public comment? Any other comments or concerns coming from us? Thank you for all the hard work thank on you, this. Scott. It's really sure. looking good. Great. Big group effort. It's really going to be great to get it to. So thank you. Now we're going to be moving on to our the consideration of Thanks. our Morro Bay T bid continuation and assessment. Jennifer. This is part two from our annual meetings. So we're going to uh, go through kind of a high level of the budget. Budget is um, still has to go through council for approval, but uh, th that's part of our renewals. We have to have the budget in place for that. So this is to renew TBID at the estimated 3% assessment for 1920, and it's estimated to generate 823,643 in assessment. Um, that is including on top of that is the 60,000 that council recommended two nights ago. So we had uh, asked for 75 and they came back at 60. So I've adjusted the budget accordingly, which is why I gave you a hard copy of the budget. And there's also a copy in the back of the room if anybody wants to look at that. So the total revenue and sourcing for our budget for next year would be $904,000. That includes an estimated 6,000 in ad sales for our um, annual visitor guide. So just a real quick kind of overview of how this works. This is described in a municipal code 3.60030 to help promote tourism in Morro Bay and the most significant economic driver in the community. The same chapter specifically authorizes the use as follows. The money for um, in the TBIT is to general promotion of tourism within the district and is to include costs specific in the business plan to be adopted annually, the marketing conference group and film business that benefit local tourism and the local hotel industry in the district, 
and the marketing of the district to the travel industry in order to benefit local tourism and the local hotel industry in the district. So we're going to go through the budget, you guys. Um, what I'll, I think I'll do is I'll kind of go through, I'm just going through kind of a high, kind of a, not line item by line item, but kind of just general synopsis on different areas that I want to point out. And then if we want to go through um, line items, we can. But why don't I go through this and then we'll come back, come back around to it. So I already talked about the 75 is going down to 60. Some of the other notable things in the budget is the um, transfer of $31,394 in expenses that's uh, resulting from 2% administrative charge for support with IT related to expenses by the city. The city does not charge for direct overhead support for the city manager, finance staff, human resource staff, or general event support such as um, with Amgen yesterday. The 2% administrative charge is based on assessment received to help offset support costs. Like these two great people sitting on either side of me today. The budget does include a pre-approved 2% COLA for staff. That is for salary and benefits reflective, reflective of, of a previously negotiated cost of living increase. The staffing in the tourism office currently is one full-time and two part-time staff. We are assuming that will stay the same for this next year unless there is a change with VRs and RVs coming in, then we'll need to relook at everything, budget, staffing, and what we need to do accordingly to bring them in. So the total cost for that category is $219,086. Under the service section of TBID, there's a lot of things. Um, and just so you guys have an idea, um, I've got numbers in here in the budget. And these are not hard fact numbers that you have to keep that dollar in that category. If we are into the year and find that we need to spend money in a different category, we can move it. So I don't want you to worry too much that you know wait, maybe we have like $500 or 1000 in one category and you want to move it. I, you know, I've, I've assessed it pretty tightly to what I feel that we need in the different categories. And I've also given you some recommendations on um, some increases that I would like to do. So under consulting, we have our SEO contract, and I also hold money in there for our freelance design that we need throughout the year. That's for, like, our passports, um, different things like that, and that's uh, a little over $14,000. The contract service line item, we specifically carve that out strictly for mental marketing so we have a really clean line item that we can see all their expenses that come in and out. And that includes all of their planning, management, creative, PR, any sort of placement fees. That, you know, we negotiated down a 12% um, fee on their placed media, so that is included in there. Promotion advertising, that is strictly the printing cost for the visitor guide. I've estimated that at $12,000. I'm actually just getting bids in, and they're between nine and 12000 so I'm comfortable with where that is right now. Um, one of the things that uh, Metal Marketing and I are looking at is the idea of maybe running just with this one print ad, and it's an annual guide that goes out to meeting and event planners specifically for athletics and really go after that outdoor athletic market because we don't really have any good venues or you know, conference space, but we have great outdoor space for running or any sort of outdoor activities. So that's one of the things that we're just um, looking at. Community event support, I've put in 40000 or 50000 um, So my recommendation on this would be to use TBID dollars for the grants this year and then put the general funds into the digital spend because that's very focused on the whole destination. And then we don't have to worry about community grants versus grants that are specific to tourism. Does that make sense? You guys understand that part of it? Yeah, because one of the challenges we were having before, going back two years, when we took on the larger amounts of general fund dollars into grants was we had community grants come in that really are not tourism driven and so we it was fine because it was general funds and so we portioned out some of that to go to community things that really didn't help drive us with rooms and then we would also do some that were very hotel and tourism driven and now with our money being reduced down we need to look at what we do for grants very tightly 
and they really need to be focused on driving rooms, period. So my recommendation is to move that money into a different category. And maybe at the end, if you guys want to give me ideas, I'm totally open to whatever, whatever you think on it, but that's my, my gut on it. <clears throat> our promotion media um, kind of other category is we've got our passports in there that we do. We have two different calendars. We have a Cal Poly calendar and then a Morro Bay one that we're going to talk about a little later. <clears throat> promotion other we have... Um, it's kind of a blanket category. It's got our money for the wine promotion that we do. It has two utility bill inserts in there, and those go out to every household in Morro Bay, and they run about $700. I, I put two in there. One would be for the annual yard sale now that we've taken over um, managing that, so that would be one that we definitely would do. We did that this year, and that's to get people to notify them about the yard sale, and the other one is just a placeholder in case we decide that there's something else we want to do. I also have money in there for uh, banners, possibly a, doing a new canopy. Our canopy still says the old logo. I haven't replaced it just due to cost. So I'm holding that in there. If we decide we don't financially want to take that on this year, we don't have to, but I just wanted to put it in there for now. Our advertising sponsorship is our co-op category, and that's a lot of co-ops. That's that would have been our CCTC map cover that we did, our CC, the back map cover that we did. That's some of the things that we do with SlowCal when they have different ads. Like they're doing um, right now, they're doing a, a launch for a Google platform, which I'm really excited about. And they haven't told us the cost yet, but so that's coming up for this next year. It would also have um, any Visit California co-ops in there, and. For Visit California and CCTC, they don't give us any parameters. But for SoCal, they very specifically ask us if we could hold $30,000. That's a lot. So I have $15,000 in there right now. Um, obviously, it would be really nice to have more money in there, but that's what I have in there for now. Um, just so you guys kind of know where that is. I just have a quick question. Sure. So you're saying that SlowCal, and I just want to understand this, so yep. I'm so SlowCal, in addition to the one percent assessment, is asking for an additional thirty thousand dollars for co-op advertising. Is that co-op and I'm sorry, I'm asking this now, but um, thirty thousand dollars co-op for restaurants and hotels, is is it just some kind of lodging or is it a destination co-op? Can you just Sure. Do you mind? So, I'm so absolutely sorry. Not. No, no, not a problem at all. So they are just recommending. They're recommending. It's not they're requesting it at this point. So they often bring co-ops to us. They usually bring three or four every single year. And this one that they're doing right now is a Google-based one. And it's it would be destination-wide, so it would be any sort of a business would be in there, but it's a really neat idea that Google has launched, and so we're just starting to get into it, and it's something that they can only do if multiple destinations do it. So they would pay for part of it, and then we would pay for our portion of it. Um, they tried to do this last year with Arrivalist. The total cost was like $120,000, and nobody stepped up because it was so much money. So they, were, they said, we'll pay... Uh, I think they want to pay like 50000 and they want each destination to pay like 10000 And nobody, it was just too much money. So that's how they try to do it. They try to take off big things that each destination could not afford to do. And there's been some situations where the marketing committee will have like three or four of us that are doing something similar. And so we've asked them to look at maybe putting it as a co-op. Because kind of their bottom line is if two communities are doing the same thing, they will look at co-oping it like Amgen. The only reason that we got money from them from Amgen is because Pismo was also in it. So if it had started in Ventura, we would not have gotten money from them. So, yeah. It's, it's not very black and white with them, Joan. They just asked for a placeholder, and obviously I didn't put it all in there, but... Okay, I yeah. just was curious. Yeah, I, I didn't have a full uh, grip on it, so I appreciate the explanation. I, I can add just one more thing to that as well. And uh, among the arrivalists and the Google opportunities, which are fantastic, like Jen said, we couldn't afford, um, we also do um, co-op advertising. So um, like a Facebook campaign um, throughout the county, but then pushes um, all of the leads to us. And they're paying for half of whatever we, you know, they're matching funds, basically. So, so it lets our ad dollars go farther, quite frankly. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm all about co-oping. I have no problem with co-op. I love to stretch the dollar and stretch our marketing and everything that we do. I just was curious about what exactly that meant since yeah. we have a 1% bid now. I mean, we used to do that a lot when they had no bid, so I, you yeah. know, I wasn't sure. So, okay. I totally understand. I get it. I, I agree with you, too. So we're very careful about when we do that. <clears throat> so for digital media, we have listed a $270,000 commitment. That's where we are currently this year as well. And I personally would like to see that increase to 295 if we can do that. Some of the ways that we can move that money up is uh, we always have a mid-year budget adjustment. So if we come in with additional income over the first six months, we could assign that money towards increasing our digital spend, which would be great. Also, if there's any carryover from this year, we could put it towards that as well. And we won't know carryover until usually two months after it closes. So right now it says 270. And then like I mentioned earlier, I would recommend the 60,000 from the general fund go into this category <clears throat> for the digital media buy. Out of home is our outdoor board on Highway 1. That 6,600 is strictly the monthly rental. It does not include a new flex or installation. It's an oversized board. It's really expensive. It would probably be $8,000 for us to change it out and print it. So I would recommend postponing it this year unless we have a huge increase and we have more money in our budget. But at this point, I would just do the rental this year. Digital services, that's Jackrabbit and Simple View. That's $45,000 in that line item. And Jackrabbit is one of the things um, that I want to talk about. I think I have a, I think my slide is, I'll just let me pop over and talk about Jackrabbit really fast and then I'll come back. So Jackrabbit is a little bit of a problem and um, it's something that I'm currently trying to assess and figure out. We, right now we have a total of 923 rooms and 71% of our hotels <clears throat> show rates on Jackrabbit. 25% um, of them, the reservation systems are not compatible so they don't show up on Jackrabbit which is a problem. And then we have 4% of our hotel rooms that just don't have a booking engine. They don't prefer to have one. So the yearly cost on that is $14,000. It's really significant. And this might, it might resolve itself with bringing the VRs in. Because if VRs come in, we're going to have to relook at this and change it anyway. But this is a problem. You know, it needs to be figured out. And there's not a lot of opportunities for other companies. Jackrabbit was just bought by SimpleView, interestingly enough. So I'm wondering if they'll maybe better it or change it. But that just happened a couple months ago. So just so you guys know, this is kind of a hot button for me and it's in the budget but it might also change through the year. Question on Jackrabbit? I, I, I don't know about now but in the past hotels really saw a benefit for having Jackrabbit because it's a it's it, it's a direct book to the hotel. It's like having an additional access to your reservation system without having to pay between 10 and 25 percent for that reservation. Um, and some people would say, oh, how do you get 25 percent? But if you're on a booking.com and you fly a flag, you get a double hit on that reservation. Um, and so it, it adds up quickly. Um, it, and so even if vacation rentals come in, I I think that you know proportionately the money is that that, that comes in it it would still be okay to have a jackrabbit type and I'm not necessarily saying jackrabbit's the one because with simple view they may drop it and or Jennifer might come up and you know throw her pom poms up in the air and say I found something so fantastic you guys are going to do backflips so you know there might be something out there but you know having some type of booking system on the morbay.org website is really you know a value. <coughs> So I'm not recommending getting rid of Jackrabbit at all, but we have to hopefully find a better product, right? Because it should be accessible for all of our hotel rooms. So it is, it's a priority. And I, I'm part of that 25% that's yeah. not on Jackrabbit, um, but I'm guessing a lot of that 25% uses the same uh, reservation software that I have, and I am working with a company to uh, be able to integrate with Jackrabbit that's with great. the 
the current system that we use. That's fantastic. That's really great to hear. Thank you. Okay, moving on. I'm just going to say that 25% yeah. definitely would like to get those reservations. I know, I know. I feel so, terrible every time I look at that. I, it drives me I, crazy. I commend you for working hard to get that hooked up. Yeah. So for digital assets right now, I um, reduced that down. I took it down to zero. I had a few thousand in there, but with our change in the dollars, I put that to zero. Really would be nice to have $8,000 in that. We do have a really good stock of footage this year with hiring Dana with the new website. So if we have to skip it this year, we can, but it would be nice to have at least something in there. Kind of gives me a little bit of angst having nothing in there. Visiting journalists, um, I have $10,000 in there. So we could put that 10,000, that could come from the general fund if we wanted to, and then we could put 50,000 into the digital media, or we could just put all the general funds into digital media. Again, on which one? On this one? Okay, sorry. I'm going off my... See, I was up late last night, you guys. It was a long day. I don't know what I was doing, but... Sorry about that, yeah. 15. This, the budget is right. So the slides were done before. Okay, so it's 15. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for noticing that. Again, I think that's you know less money, so if we can increase that, would be good to increase it. Maybe after six months we can see if we can get some more money back in that. Travel expenses. This is for travel trade going to IPW and uh, Go West. So that runs an estimate of $12,500. That number changes every year depending on where it's located. Obviously travel and room changes depending on location. Somebody going to fix that for me. Thank you. So right now we're just doing those two shows. They are definitely the top two producing shows for Morro Bay. Um, I am scheduled to go to IPW here in a couple weeks, which will be good. And we can make a determination after this IPW if we want to skip that in 2020. We can just leave it in the budget for now. And then if we decide we want to move off of that, we can. I think it needs some really thorough research. I think we should have Michael Wembolt come in and talk with us as well with a new property coming on board in two years. I think it's really key to have that outreach on Atascadero Road. So keep that in mind when we go to these trade shows. It's not booking for tomorrow. It's booking you know, two years out or even farther out. So I think we'll discuss it more, but I would recommend to keep it in there for now. And then um, Go West, you know, that's really different. It's one-on-one. -on -one. It gives me great opportunity to have a good connection with travel um, agents compared to IPW where I sit in the county booth and you know, I'm there with other people. So it's very different where... Go West, I'm just one-on-one -on -one with, but it's quick. You have three minutes to explain your destination. So it's a very different feel. I like them both, and I'm seeing great results from both of them. This is now my third year in a row doing them, and we're finally starting to see traction. Some of the, it's hard because not all the hotels share with me if they're getting travel or anything, but I do try to try to pin them down on what they're having. But just this just came up in the last few weeks. We have a a three-day stop here from Minnesota in 2020. That's pretty great. It's 60. It's a group of 60 coming in from Minnesota for three days in Morro Bay. I mean, awesome, right? So that's that growth. That came from Go West this last year. So that's the type of growth that I want to see. And the way that came about was somebody else at that same company had called me the month before about coming out once a month to do an oyster tasting on the way to Hearst Castle. And Joan, you and I talked about this, that these day stops, you can turn them into overnights eventually. And so this second one, the three-day stop, came from the same, same group. So it's really great stuff. So things like that are happening. We have a tour group from Brazil that's coming in for a two-night stay next year and one from Georgia for a two-night stay. So that out-of-market, international, I, I love all that. So... If you guys can help me get information from other hotels, I would love to hear what other people are getting from our efforts. Hello? <laughs> Any other questions on that? No? I'll keep going. So that's kind of the budget. I didn't go over every line item. If you want to get into we can. I'm open to questions or thoughts. I'm open book. Whatever you guys Marketing want to do. consultant. Is that, was that Carl Roboto? 
I don't have them on here for this next year. No, no, th that's what the the blank. As I was just trying to figure. Where the, are you looking, Charlie? Um, line item. Um, it's in seventy services. It's fifth line item down. Marketing consulting. Six one zero eight. Yeah, six one zero eight. I was just curious if the forty two eight eighty seven, if that was Carl and. It was part others. of him. Part of him. Okay, yeah. and that's why it's blank. That was my question. It also would have been part of Simple View, because when we did the Simple View contract, it was after the budget was created. So, like I'm telling you now, we can move line items around. I had to find, you know, forty-four thousand dollars for Simple View, so I had to kind of split it out. So, when you're looking at the budget, there's three different line columns. The one on the far right is the proposed for next year, and I've just put some notes there, kind of what we just talked about, so you can kind of get an idea of what those different costs are estimates of the costs and then the first two line items were the um, actual budget that was approved for this last year or this current year and then the amended meaning if we had any additional money come in we added to it um, yeah. community events you know that's such a significant reduction I just mm -hmm. thinking this through I really hope that the city backs up T bid when we have to turn down whatever event superbration and you know and these people stand up here and they ask us for grants it's going to be really tough so you know it, I just I truly hope the hoteliers aren't blamed for this right one of the biggest fears that I've heard is that events will leave the area and I we we've, we've all spoken about that um, I also have to say that uh, we got something we didn't get it all taken away and we were very we were I was really worried that we were going to come up with a zero with a goose egg for this year and so we're blessed with this money and we'll work hard to continue you know raising rates and getting higher occupancy and uh, better returns for our investors but also better um, yeah. to fill the coffers and if you want I know events drive tourism yeah. and I know some of the events that we funded in the past really didn't mm -hmm. so I I think this is a real wake-up call for finding out the finding our fine-tuning our best events. I want to remind to you, we all. we committed to ten thousand dollars to bring the World Surf League in, so that's already taken ten out of that. Um, we can put more money in there if you want to pull it from another category. We can do that, but I mean, we're we're pretty tight. Yeah, I'm looking at this, and I'm um, what I'm hearing is that we've taken the, and maybe I'm wrong with what I'm hearing, so we've taken the general fund money and we're putting it into digital media buys to compress um, the rest of the destination. Is that correct? And we're not putting any of that into events. So the event funding that's coming is coming directly from the hotel assessment levy. Um, levied assessment is how I should say it. Sorry about that. Um, so uh, then... I think it would, to Stephen's point, make sense that when we put our RFP out for, or whatever we call it, our notice, that we'll be funding events for at the tune of whatever the amount is that the board agrees on, $40,000, from the levied assessment, then that, um, that announcement specifies that those events impact the hotel uh, revenue or overnight stays uh, directly and I think that that alone will um, make it so that the smaller community events and I I'm on a board a community board that's never applied for a grant so I'm going to use us which is the community foundation of Estero Bay um, we've never applied for an event but it would keep it would keep us from being able to apply for a grant if the grant criteria sp is specific and specifies. So that's really where we need to um, focus our effort with those, with the money letting for the grants when we award the grants. Prior to that, we need to focus on what the focus will be for the grants themselves. Uh, I don't know if that's off topic. Okay. <laughs> well, the, so. I agree with that, Joan, and I think it's not just the criteria, it's communicating with these folks that are going to be planning a year in advance and all of a sudden they're oh, not yeah. going to get their funding. So if there's some way we can communicate with them in advance, I think it would be a good thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. And we may not, 
want to shy away from institutions that uh, are for, for profit. I had mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. They may or may not get TBID money, but you know those entities may make sense yeah. when we don't have as much support that we can give out. And we're going to, um, later in the agenda, we're going to put together a subcommittee to talk about grants. So okay. we'll get into that as well. But um, yeah. And I had, so I, I do have a question because we're not only approving the budget, but we're approving, we ha it, the, it says the subject is consideration of the Morro Bay Tourism Business Improvement District TBID annual report and continuation of the TBID assessment for fiscal year 2019-2020, which is a huge mouthful, by the way. Um, and, but, um, so in that, uh, as you, as we go further into it, we adopted the 10-year strategic plan that Carl Roboto put out, and if I'm mistaken or not, somebody stop me, but I thought that he said that we would be seeing like over a 10-year period a 20% gain. Is that what he believed? What was put in there was a 100, I think it was a $161 million impact at this time, and the ambition is to go to $200 million. Um, in his comments to, to city council, he's very, very clear, at least trying to be, that that's not on TBID. TBID and council in the city doesn't need to generate that 40 million, but they're a major player in that. That also includes hoteliers and what they're, they're going to do to improve mm -hmm. their stock and also potentially new hotel stock and new vacation rentals, right? Those, it's a cumulative if, uh, impact of up to $40 million is what he thought was a reasonable expectation if we continue the trend we're on and we push um, things like the website we push our marketing in, in a new direction, that, that all those things together would lead to a, a much greater impact overall. Okay. Yeah. So I wouldn't right. say that you would tie in your annual report, you wouldn't say, you know, TV is going to generate $40 million. In no. Yeah, that's all. No, I was just, I, the reason I'm asking is because when we get to the goals part, I wondered if we were going to tie the goal back, direct, any goal back directly to, you know, implementing uh, a portion of the 10-year strategic plan since it, we spent a lot of time and effort on it um, and it's now adopted and is a goal to the city. I just didn't really see anything in there about it and um, its effort, it does have an effort in it to raise revenue, which I think was a, semi a focus of council when I watched the, the meeting. Um, but I, I didn't see us really say that. Um, I, I, it, it's interesting because we say the things to do in there, but we just don't mention the 10-year plan. And I think that since we adopted it, we might want to you know, toss a, at least a shout out to it uh, in there. So it says, assist in the development and growth of athletic competitions. That does talk about it there. It says, um, attract overnight guests to fit in our strategic plan model. Okay. But I can add more if you want. Or it's we can not just a problem. Spec specify, implement the strategic plan, and then put the goals under that. Just so it's. But it's, it's not gonna, all going to get implemented well, in one well, year. Of course. But so. Oh, yeah, right. Begin implementation. But it's just the start. Yeah. Well, this is only a one year approval, anyhow, so it can't all be implemented in one year, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'd love to see us at least, you know, call out, call that, doc call that document out that we worked so hard on. Why don't we say continue implementation of the adopted strategic plan? Because we're already starting on that. We have the website up. And Any further comments, questions, concerns? Just a real quick comment um, for line item 6113, the print ads. Uh, you said you wanted to advertise a more, uh, I guess, our active lifestyle down here. Um, is there any area to increase Morro Bay as a wedding destination as well. Um, I know I'm getting a lot of feedback from people that are planning their weddings um, for, the, for this upcoming year and next year as well. Um, and also I have employees getting married and they were kind of wondering about that and so some clarification on that and movement. Hi, Amish. I'm happy to, to um, talk about this. Um, <clears throat> where we really um, target 
the wedding um, tourist and traveler um, is through our public relations and awareness growth of us as a wedding destination, as a, you know, um, engagement destination, as a honeymoon destination. So there's a couple of levels that we go after. We do have um, a journalist interested in coming that writes for several wedding publications out of Washington, D.C. And we're working with the state to see if we can get two other destinations to host them as well so then we can get the state to cover their travel. So there's a lot of levels that go into it, but we do address it, um, at, especially um, this time of year. Um, the spring is a good time. Spring into summer is a good time to address it. So it's definitely on our radar on an ongoing basis. So, um, Yeah, and I was going to say, if, if we want to, so later on in the agenda as well, Marianne's going to talk about marketing plan for next year as well. So definitely this would be part of it. And we might want to ask her to not necessarily look at print, but come back to us with a recommendation on is it digital or is it print, and really look at what is the best avenue for wedding destinations. Right. Not Because I don't know that print's really it. You hit such a fine market. Yeah. I mean, there's so many publications, and they're all floundering. But and do we go after, like, a digital perspective of come for your wedding? And, yeah. and social as well, too. Right. I would, I would totally. Probably. I feel the common uh, communication that I get with most of the guests that stay at my property, they can't find any information about how to hold or where to hold a wedding here in Morbay. Mm -hmm. There's absolutely no information out there. And so they ask me, and then I'll go forward and you know, I'll let them know, uh, you know if you need permits, where to hold a wedding, the best time of year to get married in Morbay because our weather's just so up in the air. But... Um, yeah, it would be nice to put out more information for them to be able to hold. For sure. And, and I can help kind of connect that the city side with um, the rec department. Now that our site's up, I think we can have a lot more of their links on there as well. So we can, I think we can fix that. Yep. Weddings and funerals are, yeah, uh, I, I know, that, uh, they shouldn't be hand in hand, but weddings and funerals are, you know, it's you hate it's love both ways, and you don't really like to discuss love as a business, but they're very good for a community. There are weddings that are five days long, and if we want to increase our, you know, MLOS, then having a wedding come to town that's a five-day wedding event is a big deal. Funerals are usually folks start to come in about two days in advance of the event, and and you know. We do have a contingent of businesses that perform memorials at sea here. Um, mm -hmm. That you know, um, the, the a funeral will take half of a hotel or a full hotel sometimes, depending on you know who the person is and of course how that is. But weddings are a, a huge, huge business. They'll fill up a whole hotel, and you know I wouldn't mind seeing Charlie's hotel filled up every day with a wedding. Because if his hotel is filled up, then you know, then everybody's calling Amish and you know Stevens hotels for all their weekend rooms or whatever. So it's good. It's great. So I agree. Yeah, anything we can do to promote weddings, terrific. It's also interesting from the Morro Bay Maritime Museum. We have been approached multiple times, and we are doing. We're becoming a very popular um, celebration of life destination. So. They are able to use the facility, the space, with a great view. Uh, it's a calm location. It's simple. Um, and there are a lot of folks from out of town who are coming to do a celebration in the parking lot at the Triangle Lot. It's, and it's, it's great. It's great stuff. That's a, that's a really good point that you bring up about the funerals, um, being that we are kind of a funeral destination, so we'll definitely add that in. I mean, you know, just being a member of the Yacht Club, I constantly get people, I, no, 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 I mean, I know it's kind of a hard thing to talk about. I mean, I've lost a lot of family members recently, so but it's, you know, it, it happens, and it's, it's part of life. And, um, but a lot of people reach out to me to find a boat to take out their loved ones and, you know, cast their ashes at sea. You bring up a really good point, and, and we'll, we'll definitely include that in as part of the wedding um, 
the wedding slash funeral strategy maybe? Yeah, what's really good about Morro Bay in terms of funerals is that we're such a small town and we're so friendly and mm -hmm. we can really, you know, the person who owns the hotel and who owns the restaurant, they can really reach and help right. comfort the family. Right. And so we, we are really unique. We're uniquely poised for, you know, all of that. So I think, you know, just the, 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 psyche of our town, the way we come around to people when they need it, I think that's, you know, good for folks in that, in that time of their life. Agreed. Any other comments? Any public comment? <clears throat> Seeing none, I'm going to entertain a motion. Not nope. yet. Hold on. <laughs> Not yet. So I have, if you go to the very back page, you'll see I have uh, $6,000 still left in my budget. We can put somewhere if we want to increase visiting journalists. We can put it there or wherever. I just want to talk with you. We can put it in grants if we want to bump that up a little bit. I wanted to hear your thoughts or suggestion on that. It's not a lot of money, but let's use it. Any thoughts? Do we have a wedding landing page on the... Yes, we more, do. We do now. It's okay. really strong. It's not... I mean, nothing is finished on the site, but sure. it's really strong. It shows, yeah, event space. Okay. And, yeah. Okay. It, need, it still needs work, so I'm, I'm hesitant because it pulled over all the old stuff. And so oh. we've got, like, all the photos need to be done of the uh -huh. parks, and it's just... It's oh. okay. It, but it's getting there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'd like to put a challenge to us on the board and to the other hoteliers and even restaurant people that on your visiting journalists um, that we all try to do our part. If you're bringing journalists in and it's shoulder season and it's midweek, that I'm not necessarily saying you have to comp the room, but you can do some things in that way that that, that could help on that budget item. So I think before I would want to increase that, I would like to, I have the faith that Jennifer has check these people out and knows mm -hmm. it's worthwhile to come to our mm -hmm. town and then we can do our part as the hotel. So I would put it to grants before I would put it to, to that line. If those That's, are the two options you're considering. It's, it's a really good idea, Chris, and maybe um, we should bring back for future agenda items to look at how we spend that money mm -hmm. on visiting journalists. Yeah. That might be a really good thing to look at because I agree, I would like a policy in place to try to ask or request from the different people, whether it's hotel or restaurants to help because, I mean, they get publicity. They get a huge publicity from it. So. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> they are. I mean, we're, we're really tight on who we're bringing out. Mental's doing a good job on that. Um, yeah. Is there any thought on the board of, um, well, do, do you have a, let me ask you, do you have like a contingency, I want to call it contingency, a fire sale, where let's say uh, Visit Slow comes to you and says, oh, Jennifer, this is like, would be a great opportunity for Morro Bay. We have, uh, y you get to wrap the White House with uh, a Morro Bay skin, and it's only $6,000. You know, do we have, yeah, do we have, so do, do you have a line for that, uh, you know, somewhere? I, or is that what this $6,000 would be? I do not have a line for that in my budget, but like I mentioned earlier, we can pull from different line items if we feel there's something we want to do. In mental marketing's budget, they do have usually about $15,000 that they hold as a contingency in our ad spend. Okay. So if something comes up that's unusual or an extra co-op, I've you know had her put it through that, if we're out of co-op money, things like that. But I, I mean, I don't really feel that I need that in my budget since I can move those dollars around if I see something in another area that we want to do. Then I'd be interested sense. in putting some of it towards grants and m yeah. maybe splitting it and plumping up those visiting journalists because the, when hotels get mentioned and when restaurants get mentioned, there really is an increase uh, in folks coming to Morro Bay, but it's up to you guys. Well, to go back on my original line, if you put it to, if we put it to grants, we can't pull that away once we've uh, promised it. That's true. To others, when they come in September, I believe it is, right? Right. Then that no, is committed. No, it's not September. We do I'd grants recommend in July. keeping it and maintaining it <laughs> for flexibility rather than denoting it. Am I okay doing that? Okay. So the other thing that we um, could do is. The sponsorship of the WSL, that's not a grant, it's a sponsorship, so it doesn't necessarily have to go through grants. Oh. You know, that's just something else. And we can deal with that later on, but um, it's a sponsorship, it's different, so. 
Okay, so you're saying uh, come come back and revisit the WSL and possibly put six, the six thousand dollars towards it at a future date. We could, yes. Uh huh. Although it's ten thousand, but that'd be part of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay, so I think so we we'll leave it leave kind it. of floating. <clears throat> yeah, that's fine. So next step, looking for a recommendation from this board in a motion to recommend the continuation of uh, acceptance of the annual report and continuation of the 3% T-bit assessment for fiscal year 1920. So moved. I'll second that. Great. Call on a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? None. We're moving on. <laughs> and looks like it's time for, we're going to take a quick break. Is that okay with everybody? Yep. Five minutes. We'll, it is 1036, so say at 1046, we'll, 41, we'll come right back. And we're back on, folks. Thank you for our small break. We are moving on to B4, the fiscal year 1920 marketing plan outline by Jennifer and Hello. Thank you. So this is a recommendation. We always do a marketing plan. Um, we were waiting to have, obviously the strategic plan was done. Metal marketing has given us two options, a one year and a three year. My gut is that it would be better to do a three year to get past this whole restarting every year. But financially, we're in a situation where we probably need to do a one year. So I want to talk with you as a board, and I'll have Mary Marianne come up and she can talk about her. Uh, she has two different estimates in here you'll see in your packet. One is for a three year and one is for a one year. Marianne, you want to come on up? Good morning again. Um, thank you for having me. Um, yeah, to Jen's point, so um, the strategic plan, you know, um, how do we how do we adhere to that when there's budget issues that kind of affect the decisions that we make, right? So we um, and to, to um, support this, the strategic plan. Um, Carl Roboto recommended doing a three to five year marketing plan that included not only, you know, media, um, trends, ideas, um, um, and that sort of thing, but also um, recommended doing the creative in advance. And so that we really kind of know um, what creative, you know, how, how our brand is going to grow over the next three to five years, you know, what subtle changes do we want to make, um, and so um, that's why we went ahead and did an estimate based on a three-year marketing plan that included creative, meaning that we would also be fleshing out all of the promotions that we would be doing. And then uh, one of the exciting things for us was when we started putting this estimate together was that it would also allow us to really strategically over the next three years um, attach... Um, the strategic plan to the creative versus how we've been doing it the past couple of years is one year at a time. And um, as you all know, we rolled out the um, vacation rules um, program this past um, fall. So that we're in, you know, basically the beginning of a brand awareness campaign. I'd love to see it go three years um, and then how we can fine tune it and build on it. Um, now that we have this foundational document of the strategic plan is really just going to help us to take it to the next level. So, um, so that to me would be the ideal situation. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, but to Jen's point, I guess there are some financial issues. Obviously, the the um, funding from the general plan is or the general general fund 
came down. Um, and so we also did a one-year plan um, that does include creative for the next year, but it doesn't really kind of go strategic into the two following years. So, so that's kind of where we are. Um, I think that we've shown some great success with the new brand campaign that we have going, the vacation rules. Um, we're showing year-over-year -year, um, um, growth from um, promotions, campaigns and promotions in the 30 to 40 percent. Um, this last month was, the growth was 80 percent, but I think there was an anomaly last year that I recall, uh, that I didn't mention in there. Um, do you recall what I'm talking about? So year over year, <clears throat> I'm tracking underneath the website on the first page of the marketing plan. It shows um, year over year our, our social media growth and year over year our campaign growth. So, so that's how we know that the campaigns are tracking better this year. Um, and like I said, in the, the 30 to 40 percent range, which is huge. So, um, so that's kind of where we are. I guess that's the situation at hand. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that, that you might have. I have a question. Um, we're trending up in the, I don't know all my terms for well, our media hits. Um, is that an industry norm? Is that more people utilizing the, your entities that you're producing and, as an industry? So is everybody else up 30 or 40 percent? Because I'm trying to draw um, the correlation of yeah. our hits are up, but our occupancy is not. So, so where the miss is, and ours, right. ours is our product depleting. So. Well, I mean, if you you know, go, going back to I think something that. Um, um, that Joan mentioned earlier about the strategic plan, which I just had up on my phone here. Hold on one second. Um, I don't know if I still do. Let's see. Basically, in the strategic plan, Carl Roboto identifies that, okay, we can expect that 10% of people going to our website are booking. So one of, the, one of the goals we really have is to drive people to our website. We want to grow our website annually 20%. Um, and we just haven't been there. And so, and I think a lot of it has to do with the website. This month, like Megan had reported, that we're already, uh, or April, we launched the... April um, 10th. April 10th. We launched the website April 10th, and we're already up 18% year over year. So that's what we want to see is like 20% growth year over year. So we're just now getting to that point where the website is also helping us, but the promotions are... The promotions are the promotions in the social media were kind of like what has been pushing the website uphill for the past couple of years, if you will. So I think to get where we need to be, we need to have our SEO in place, which that was a struggle um, for our vendor, the um, for Rick um, on our SEO, you know, on the SEO front. So we are seeing growth. We're gonna. We're just not at where we want the level of growth to be for you know multiple reasons. But it's not because of the promotions, and it's not because of the social media. Like I'm saying, like I said, those we're seeing significant growth year over year. Um, to answer your question about Chi, what are other growth of other people? I, I don't know the answer to that. I mean, I could certainly look it up um, to make it kind of apples to apples. Um, but I think one of the, the significant things about you know, the campaigns this year over last year is that we have a consistent brand. We finally got the, you know, you guys approved a brand that we can now stick with and apply to every campaign. Whereas last year we didn't have that. We didn't have a brand standard. We didn't have, you know, all of that done. Um, and a brand template, if you will. Um, and so I think that has a lot to do with it too. So what we're going to see now is, you know, we're in the first year of a new brand campaign. And as we go into year two and year three, um, maybe even get four years out of it, um, people are going to become more aware of what our brand is. They're going to recognize our ads when they see it. And I think that's what we're seeing even in this first year mm -hmm. from campaign to campaign to campaign. And so I think it's ultimately going to result in occup higher occupancy, higher rev par, you know, higher, which results in higher TOT. Um, but I think it's that growth of awareness that matters. So we're in our, we're in our, you know, 10th month of a new, of a new campaign. We really want to see that go at least three years, at least three years, if not four. Does that answer your question? It, well, it, it does, and it, it's not necessarily a fair question to you. I guess I'm trying to, Carl Roboto was saying that, you know, it's very competitive out there, right? We're yes. all competing for the same, uh, the same tourists, per se. So, 
that's what I'm trying to figure out is I, yeah. I believe in your products, I believe in what you're doing, and I believe what's there. So let me get that Thank out. Thank you. I just wonder if that's just keeping us competitive with everybody else, meaning you know, how do we gain above them? Right. Ha just guessing, because our occupancy, again, is not, and maybe it's not enough time. Maybe it's just, you know, another mm -hmm. year or two is the right time to analyze that. Sure. Um, but it would be nice to see that, hey, our, our hits are up 20%, and oh, wow, look, our occupancy is up. 10 percent right you right know, that there'd be but we're not we're seeing a disconnect there and i'm trying to just fill that gap and and you probably can't answer that I, one of the things I, I, I wanted to mention chris i know you weren't at the destination summit but they did talk about um smith travel research just did their announcement for 2020 estimates and they're estimating occupancy to go down but revenue to go up which is good that means you're gonna have a higher rate mm -hmm. so that's what they're they're trying to that's what they're kind of positioning everybody to be prepared for this next year. So I don't think it's just us. That's what they're estimating. So I, I'm going to weigh in on that. Yeah, I wasn't there either, but uh, when occupancy, th 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 that can be good, but costs are also going up, specifically right. in Morro Bay. So we will, even if occupancy stays flat here, we will see hotel rates rise just because of the cost of uh, utilities rising. And then also labor costs. Uh, you know, there's, I've said this before, there's like a two or three percent unemployment in the county which means that you know this is the time when employees can negotiate their rates and hotels are are not paying minimum wage I want to make that very clear hotels do not pay minimum wage in this town for any job I don't know where that information is coming from but they don't um, so it, it, it's impossible to do that and have a, a, produ a productive happy labor force the point I want to make is that Chris has a very valid point, which is um, the hotels can't take um, impressions to the bank. I mean, Charlie, you just said the other day, I have uh, goals that I present, quarter you just said a, a little while ago, you have goals that you present quarterly, you have a review that you do quarterly with your, you know, with your uh, owners and you, I would seriously doubt that your owners say, well, you know, your goal is to just increase. I mean, there's a goal attached to that and I know, you know, he does, he's right when he says it's probably not a specific question for you, but overall, you know, what, what is the level that we want to see this come up because, um, the advertising does at some point have to transition into uh, revenue. It has to transition into revenue at some point. It's really, really important. I see the hotel people shaking their head yes. It's really, really important that it transitions into revenue uh, for the hotels, which is revenue for the city. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so uh, what? what is the... How do you get to that goal is right. what I'm... Great question, actually, because this it ties into what I was going to add on to my um, answer to Chris's question. So here we are 10 months into ADARA tracking, okay? This, this information that we've had for the first time ever is telling us where people are searching other than Morro Bay, when they search Morro Bay, but then where else they search and then where they book when they don't book in Morro Bay. We've never had that information. And so this is going to be key for us. It's actionable information that we can fine tune our advertising next year, which I just got goosebumps actually because I'm so excited about it. Um, because that's going to make a difference too. In fine tuning our advertising, um, I think is going to show improvement on top of a consistent brand. Um, and then to your point, we are able to, for the first time, track revenue to our advertising. And we're, and we're reporting that to you guys through Adara. So we can show, now next year, this month, we can show year over year how much growth we had in not only you know, clicks and impressions, which you can't take to the bank, but in revenue. And so that, that's on us to make sure that that growth happens. This is the first year. That, so this is our benchmark year, quite frankly, for us to really, really be able to even answer these questions. And I doubt there is a city in this county that can answer these questions because I don't think anybody else in the county has a DARA 
tracking. And so we are actually tracking clicks and impressions to revenue. Um, we're also tracking it to um, um, length of stay. So we can watch that as a key performance indicator that we actually have uh, something to track that number. Like we've known for years it's 1.5, it's 1.5. We want to we grow it. We really want to grow it. But we didn't have a way to track it. You know, even though that was a huge goal, there wasn't a, a, a solid way to track it. Now we can. And I've been starting to report that out too, like, you know, in the campaigns. Like this was our length of stay that was booked <clears throat> during this campaign. And here's another thought that I know you guys will all understand is that um, we are also tracking um, look to book and book to arrival. Okay, so when people are booking, let's say they're, they're, they see our ad and they book based on our ad, it doesn't mean they're actually coming this month. They could be booking two months out. They could be, you know, most likely they're booking about um, 40, 40 days, 45 days. So um, that's average, so half or less, you know, half or more. So, um, so, so there's a lot going on in this, and so I, I think that at this point, I would love to see us do a three-year plan based on the data that we have right now, and then what we do is we have concepts done over a three-year period of time, but as we go through that, you know, I mean, it's a living, breathing thing, you know what I mean? We have to be able to be um, um, reactive we have to be able to be flexible. Um, but if we have a basis and a foundation going in based on the strategic plan, and Jen and I have already talked about how we're going to tie in the, the successful promotions we have, how are we going to strengthen them, how are we going to evolve them to you know, reflect our, our key positioning from the strategic plan, you know, being able to do that over three years is huge. Um, so, but, uh, you know, so, so Chris, I mean... Well, I... Yeah. Yeah. I agree, and I think that a long period must happen, and I really like what we're having. And you know what? I hope we have this conversation four years from now, and we say, you know what? The website's killing it. Yeah. It's doing great. Right. Maybe we as a city are not doing enough. We as hoteliers are not doing enough. We as restaurants, you know, that maybe we have that down. We have that so good because it's Definitely. it can't all be on the website. Right. right. There's a lot to this. So. There's a lot to it. Absolutely. Right. But Absolutely. it would be really neat down the road, something to think about, if we did have those numbers. Say, hey, the hits on uh, San Luis Obispo's website are up 23% right. and their occupancy is <clears> up too. <throat> Ours is this. And it'd be a nice comparison. Sure. It'd be kind of a neat thing to have because yeah. you need more to do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, there's, a, there's, a root, there's a root cause issue going on here that I'm sure we're all aware of, which is that... Um, you know, our KPIs are not really clearly stated, especially for an omni-channel experience, um, because we're talking about the website, the website, the website, but it's not, it, we have to look at the whole digital ecosystem and create KPIs for the, not just the website. Sure. Um, so, sure. Uh, and I know that I'm not fully informed and, you know, I'm on what Adara is measuring and not measuring. Right. And for a five-year plan to just focus on SEO on the website is, you know, kind of attaching your KPIs to something that is not where a lot of traffic is going to go within currently and within two years. So I think I really need your help to understand what Adara is tracking. Yes. It used to be that occupancy was a KPI or it was an outcome for hotels. It's no longer, from what you're saying, an outcome. Um, revenue and profit is going to be purely our outcome and occupancy is going to become a KPI because it it's driving higher, higher, um, Revenue input, so all the KPIs are in flux. Is my 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 point here? And I hear I sometimes feel like we have these semantic discussions around KPIs at this table. Um, and being the newbie, I'm kind of like, wait, I'm the one that's like writing all this down and defining it, and hearing that we're actually talking in circles around our KPIs. So I I really think we need to really scrub and say, all right, what are the key performance indicators mm -hmm. that we're going to track that most reliably end up in higher revenue and profit? Mm -hmm. Because occupancy is not an outcome anymore. It's the, it's the key performance indicator. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I hear all this shifting, and I, I really think we need help because um, I, I think sometimes, and we, especially if we're going to commit to a three- to five-year plan, we don't. We want to make sure we're measuring the right things for the long term. Mm -hmm. And in my, 
you know, industry I was in for so many years, you never do a five-year plan because the, the technology is going to change so much mm-hmm. during that time that you want to make sure that you're not getting stuck measuring the wrong things and planning on the wrong. So I think there's a time for, you know, I, I, there's a whole omni-channel KPI strategy that's not just measuring the website, that's looking at, and not S, SEO is, is becoming so antiquated. So it's, it's what, what, what is the whole um, Twitter feed, social, Absolutely. mobile? Absolutely. You know, what's the whole thing? And then how do we bring that together into a, 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 a unified KPI so that we can more reliably track that? Um, not just within the next year, but within the next three to five years. Make sense? Absolutely. And I don't even know what Adara does and what it doesn't track. I know, and you and I are uh, are trying to get together, and 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 so we can go over that. And and uh, yeah. Amish, I still want to meet with you, and I know Isaac hasn't. And I, I've here said today, it but... a few times in this meeting because just to be provocative, but web mach- uh, websites are the fax machines of today. You know, they're they're not mobile and app and mobile apps. And social is so is is trending so much stronger than destination websites. Um, so I really want to caution us not to put all our KPIs onto web. I know how important it is for us because that's where booking may happen, but it, it's it's not it n- isn't necessarily the right long term indicator. Right, and I and I I'm not putting all eggs in the basket on the on the. Uh, website. However, it is our key marketing tool. I yeah. mean, it is the place but, where we have the most, you know... But it may be where you actually end up most important because it's where actual bookings happen right now. But, you know, how does that... How does the whole ecosystem, your digital ecosystem yeah. layout and, that yeah. may, may attract... So we're, it might be more imp- important for us to be measuring how social and mobile is driving people to the web rather than right. measuring the web itself. Right. So social just moved into the third refer- highest referral um, of people to our website, and which is huge. And our, our social media is going gangbusters, and it, it is huge. I, I completely agree. And, and I'm excited to meet with you, and maybe we can kind of yeah. talk further in, in, about this kind of stuff. Um, and... Um, there are a lot of moving parts. I love your idea about scrubbing the KPIs and really coming up with really, you know, what are, you know, what are the key performance indicators that are that are showing results? Yeah, you know what I mean. And because we have we have so many, we really and that, do. And that, Chris, to, to, to your point about um, how click through is is not ending up with higher occupancy rate. But I think the other question for us is, is occupancy rate the right KPI to be measuring? Or is it revenue and profit? Um, yeah. And, and, but I, I, do, I, I, mean, I think it is because I'm the newbie. I just hear us kind of talk in these circles a lot about, you know, um, and it takes a lot of work for you guys to measure all these KPIs and report on them. And they're, they're kind of shards. They're not giving us the, the picture. And I think that's why we often have these, these you know, kind of around right. conversations about them. So well, Yeah. And now we have this new data, you, yeah. know, the, you know, the Adara is this new data. So I think this is the time to really, okay, let's, let's look, let's, let's, let's do some scrubbing and let's, you know, really um, pare it down. And maybe we do a little subcommittee of that or something, because yeah. I would love to have everyone's input. And I'm, you know, I, I'm a data geek. And so, so, you know, I really, you know, we should polish this. Yeah. Let's polish and, this. And the last thing I want to say is amazing job um, finding Adara and being able to actually connect um, between the efficacy of the marketing plans and the actual, you know, revenue and profit of, at, of hotels. When I worked at eBay, I mean, the, we had hundreds of millions of dollars of marketing, and the chief marketing officer would come in to our marketing meeting and would say, oh, the only thing I can tell you about the efficacy of our marketing plans are that, you know, I can't tell you anything, except it rained in Europe last week, and that's why we made money. I, I mean, <laughs> if, if you think that major public companies track their marketing dollars to every dollar that they make that it 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 doesn't exist right so so that the fact that you guys are actually starting to attach um that kind of intelligence to the but that is amazing that, that is that is you really need to be commended by that i don't know 
many, I don't know any companies I ever work for that's getting that level of intelligence. So you got, we have to, we have to really, you know, give you kudos for that. Thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah. it. I love the Adara thing because I'm yeah. also an information geek. Um, I do think that when we talk about KPIs, you know, and one, and then one of the KPIs that's constantly mentioned is hotel stock itself, the hotel product here in Morro Bay. We have some beautiful products out there. Mm -hmm. I would encourage every board member to, um, you know, get into a hotel room and look at. Uh, other people's rooms, and, and even if you're another hotelier, they'll open the door for you. We're very hospitable people. We're in hospitality. Um, but the, the point is, with uh, key performance indicators, yes, you know, Adara is going to be terrific, and I would love to see us have a full year of the data and really focus in on the data that this board wants that we can put side by side, like I mentioned earlier, with occupancy, with ADR and with uh, TOT collections uh, revenue and really then create something measurable before we develop a three or a five year. Uh, I'd like to see us have at least a full year of, of that information underneath us and focus on what we need to be able to read that and then um, move the process forward. But that's my thinking. Um, and then, um, and then when I looked at the plan, there, what I've heard from the hotels is that um, that yes, they did sell out in in um, in summer, but that it was really difficult to do. There were a lot of single day rentals last year versus two and three days the year before. And I see hotel people shaking their head yes at me. Um, and it might be different because your, your hotel is smaller. Uh, you have the same problem. And so um, we don't really have any push in summer anymore. We've kind of said, you know, they're coming. but. That's starting to soften. It's, it feels like from conversations that I'm having with hoteliers that that is starting to decay. Um, and what happens is when you don't have that compression, then you can't drive rate, you can't drive occupancy, you can't drive revenue. Um, and so, uh, you know, I, I looked at this and I see that um, there's a space where there's a, a fourth D. It says um, vacation rental. Uh, oh. Is that... Do I have what do I do with my glasses? Yeah, <laughs> so that there? <laughs> so that's in case they come on board. Yes, that's mm -hmm. uh, that's what I was assuming that if they come on board, mm -hmm. but maybe what the board might consider is with that six thousand extra dollars is looking at what's happening in summer and if if the get the feedback from hotels is that it's soft or that the look to book. Uh, you know, that normally occurs, whatever that outlook is, whether it's two weeks or four weeks, if that's a soft outlook, then maybe we should throw some money at pressing the destination then as part of yeah. your plan. Um, because I, I did hear that, but I don't know. I'd love to hear from the hotels here on this board at least what they think of summer being a little more difficult to compress. That's such an interesting, I, th I think, I, just to, it's, since um, VRs are now, there's this, this segmentation mm -hmm. in tourist mind of I stay for more than one day, I look for VR. You know, uh, it's, it's worth setting up a kitchen for five days. It's not worth setting up a kitchen for a night. And so I see this bifurcation and segmentation of, in tourist mind of hotel, one night, um, VR, multiple nights. And that might be that might be something we want to really look into. Is that happening in terms of mm -hmm. uh, perception, tourist perception of why you choose VR versus hotel? And how is that going to impact? If that is true, how does that impact the hotel business? Um, and do we, do we want to have campaigns that try to fight against that, that perception change that's happening within tourist minds? Not to be a contrarian necessarily, but I think we're in a unique position on the Central Coast that if that did become the reality, I think we're in a good position because I do think we are a great one night town. Yeah. So uh, it'd be nice, we all like those longer stays, but that idea of us incorporating our advertising with the state of California, with Slow County, with us of 
traveling that Morro Bay to Monterey route, um, it, it, we're in a unique position that our one night stays all, though I, you were saying the multiple aren't there, they tend to fill in. Yeah. They tend to fill in. I do want to just mention we do um, throughout June and July, we do run ads that are midweek focused because we know the weekends sell out. Um, they're social media and um, digital and digital um, that are midweek focused. So um, this year will be the first year we're, we're doing that with our current brand. But And th those ads start June 1st. So um, um, just wanted to mention that. One other thing I want to mention, Joan, and maybe we can talk about this offline, but I'm not, I'm trying to wrap my brain around what you said because if we show a campaign for the month of March and then we show occupancy for the month of March, I, I don't know that, that that those are actually, that one is a result of the other. Because if it, if there's a 60 day, you know, if somebody's booking out two months from now, and are ca on a campaign that the ad that they see in April, that occupancy isn't going to show up in April. Understood. That's why um, I like Charlie's idea of quarterly, and then having the full year cumulative, because then that does give us a full picture, gives us the a, big a picture. A broader picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That's all I'm looking for is a broader picture because we're looking now through a microscope, and we need to be looking. You I'm know, happy to do that for the, world. for the first three quarters. Okay, great. Once we get the Jennifer March, and we have the March, we have all the data, so we can totally do that. So let me go. I want to ask, are we, Charlie, what are we deciding on here? We're deciding between we a year and... We are for a recommendation to make a motion to approve a one-year marketing plan. And we reviewed the three-year marketing plan estimate and the one-year marketing plan estimate. And now we just need to make a determination from the board. How do we feel we're best moving forward with a three-year plan or a one-year plan? Um, the recommendation from Jen and staff is a one-year plan, which gives us an opportunity to make a review. I think that my main concern is, and my, my question is to you, Jen, and to you as the if we only do the one-year plan, are we hurting ourselves financially or are we helping ourselves financially? I know that a three-year plan gives us a, a, a building blocks, but I don't see why we can't do a one-year plan for three years each year. If it's working, I think it's great. So I think that's what you're looking for is, is for, um, for us after public comment to make a motion to approve a one-year plan. And see where we go. Any further questions or comments from the board? Seeing none, I'd like to open the floor to public comment. Hello again, uh, Alexis from Blooming Rose. Um, I just wrote down a bunch of things, and I'm just going to rapid fire it at you. Um, as somebody who's moved here from San Diego, where we have huge tourism, um, for me, when I plan on going, ho you know, on vacation, I go twice a year, and I save and research and everything. There's no amenities here at the hotels. I work with several areas, hotels in the area, and the reason why we're losing out on business is because. We don't have amenities for young children. There's nowhere for us to have our children go and play while we go and play. There's nothing like that here. There's nothing for us to incorporate together unless it's on the water um, or to go to the sweet shops or to go shopping. So just uh, think about that for the hotels. There's really no amenities. If you look at Avila, they're killing it right now. If you look at Pismo, they're killing it because everything is within walking distance and their hotels have fire pits on the roof and they have this and they have that. So everybody stays and we don't really have that here. Um, I wanted to go back to the media marketing that you guys wanted to do, the digital media. Um, I really think you guys should attract YouTube stars, you know, podcasts. I listen to them. I know a lot of people in a different range of groups that we could invite them out. And I know as a business owner that I would say I would gladly donate for our tourism board 
you know, a, a couple's massage for this person that we're entertaining so that they can come and do, you know, shows or talk about it or, or whatever and kind of invite people into Morro Bay. I never knew Morro Bay existed until I moved up here. I had no idea that there was heaven on earth. None. Um, also, experiences are selling. That's what people are going for. And the thing is, is that everybody that we pull here is from the Valley, they're from San Francisco, they're from LA, but it's because their parents went here and their grandparents went here. But they've already seen everything. They've already done everything. So maybe that's something that you guys can keep in mind. And also for the vacation rentals. And the only reason that they have the vacation rentals is because they can get a better deal for a larger group of people. And there's more to do at a home versus a hotel. You can cook. That's a big thing you can do. You can have children incorporated in that. So think about that. And then also, we have a huge transportation issue to our wineries. Um, if we can maybe incorporate, you know, we will bring you, come and stay here for a week, and we can go down to Edna Valley and, you know, be a part of our thing and incorporate, cross-promote with other you know, counties here to bring in that tourism because we don't really have it. We only have a couple wine bars here, but most of our grapes and stuff are from Paso. So maybe something along those lines. Um, I do think that you guys is one year. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All good comments. Any further public comment? Any further questions, comments, or concerns from the board? Seeing none, I, I entertain. I just want to make sure that uh, for the board as we move forward that we're clear on that line, uh, line D me, should to me uh, on um, under this it should say A, fall 2019, B, winter 2019, spring 2020, D, vacation rentals, should they be incorporated? I don't want vacation rentals or anyone to assume that that's right. That's all I'm saying. I just want to be want us to be true to the statement. Do you want to just take it off because this is going to be written very soon, and they're not going to be coming in till mid year. So why maybe don't, why don't we just it take could, it off? It could be a full year. And Who instead, knows? we're going to add the um, reviewing and creating new KPIs that are measurable. So we'll, why don't okay. we just do that? Okay. Okay. So X N A it. Lori, do we need that in the motion? So strike that, and then, uh, so then do we add in the, the words additional KPIs from Adara? And review and create new KPIs. Review and create new, okay. Yeah, or grow the KPIs. Refine, maybe review refine. Review and refine. Mm -hmm. I love Okay. Okay, those are all my questions. Sorry. Can you make it a motion? <laughs> um, I can try. Um, recommend that the. I'd like to see the TBID board recommend the approval of a one year marketing plan with mental marketing uh, to um, include the elimination of D vacation rental concepts and to add in a line um, that creates a goal to review and refine uh, ADARA and our um, KPIs. I second. Call in the vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? We are good. Thank you so much. Next, we have the review of or the establishment of a subcommittee to review TOT reports. Um, I just need two volunteers to help me set up a subcommittee that will review the TOT documents. This is the two different documents, one's with financial and one's the one we do in-house. Um, Can you have three people? No. I want two from the board, plus I will have more people, but uh -huh. board-wise, I'd like two board members. Why, why were you thinking three, Joan? Uh, I don't know. I just think more smart minds. Two. More smart minds. Two. Yeah. Paint no, the picture. Four of is the Brown Act. Oh. Four creates a. Four. Uh, Lori, is that right? Three or four? For Brown Act. Four is the quorum. Okay. 
Can you paint a picture of what this uh, committee is going to look like, the subcommittee? What, what all they're doing and reviewing? Probably this? just a couple meetings, Chris. I think we'll get together, review the documents, and then I'll need to sit with Jen Calloway and see what we can do to in incorporate some of those ideas, and then maybe all of us can get together for a second meeting. And, and I is this a monthly meeting? Not monthly. It's going to be maybe two different meetings is what I'm kind of estimating. Hmm. So On an we, annual basis? No, hopefully we'll do this once and it's done. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I'll volunteer since I brought this up and have forced this all on you. <laughs> so, it but it should have been April. Uh, Jen, I would do that too. I, I like playing with numbers. So give me a recommendation. Right, do any recommendation or not, Lori? <coughs> Just make a motion. So one of you guys make a motion and nominate for two of them, please. <laughs> I would like to make a motion to recommend Chris and Joan for the TOT subcommittee. subcommittee. I second that. Call on a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you so much. Moving on to the next, that is a creation of an event review subcommittee. One, I'm happy to have my um, revenue manager attend these meetings. He, for sure. All he does is live, eat, and breathe numbers you. for five hotels. And I, think and I have him help. on my list to Good. be in, awesome. on the committee, yeah. Thank so you. next up, um, we need to select two of our members to review uh, as a event review subcommittee. Very important also this year because of the reduced funding. Um, I sat on that group with Stephen and I'll be happy to do it again if needed. Thank you. It'd be nice to have two different board members volunteer. <laughs> no, I mean besides the two that just volunteered. Mm -hmm. So this side of the table, Charlie, this way, if you don't have to, but. <clears throat> I would enjoy uh, being on that board. And Nancy, did you say? Or I'm looking for. Do you need more? I need two. Okay, yeah. There. I you know my travel schedule, that's my only... We can work around that. Okay. Yes, I will volunteer. And maybe if you're not available, I'll, I'll get a sub. Alternate. Yeah. I just want to say thank you to you two. Having done uh, the event grants subcommittee, thank you to Charlie and Stephen. You, you are loved by some and vilified by others and anyone who volunteers for the event grants, uh, you know, maybe I should extend my offer of a plaque for all of you, <laughs> right? <laughs> I want my sign. <laughs> yeah, everyone gets a plaque. It's like recreation sports. Are you making a motion, Oh, yes, I'm sorry. I'm making a motion. Uh, I move that Amish and Nancy um, be on the event grant review subcommittee and that uh, Jennifer be able to choose an alternate should she uh, need one. I'll second that. Vote. All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Now, last but not last least, item. we yeah. have a beautiful calendar that we've made every year and we are looking for the approval to renew for next year at $3,000 with some amazing photography. A little different this year because a bit <clears throat> my intent, this, so those were paid for um, and they were given just to hotels as gifts last year, so we only printed 40 of them. So the intention is to, um, I've talked with Dana and she's um, willing to do an exclusive with us so she won't be doing one with City of Cayucas or anybody else, which I like. And it would it'd feature all of our events on there, all of them that we want to put on there and I'll run it by you guys. And the idea is standard retail price, and she sells them at all the retail stores in Morro Bay. And we get them out by July so that when people are here, it's a great Christmas gift. People love calendars, and they take them home, and they've got, got it, and they're giving it as gifts. So it's a sponsorship. It would be the official Morro Bay calendar. 
from and have moreway.org and have all of our events on every page. The calendar in the back, not the calendar, the map in the back would be Morro Bay specific or maybe Central Coast specific. And I think it's a really good thing. Nobody's doing it yet here in our area and I want to do it. So that's my, my thought for you on it. Could they be offered for sale at hotels? Everywhere. Okay. Everybody can is welcome to have it. So the intention though is the same price. That way, wherever you are in town, same price. Yeah. Yes. Didn't I? So there's the. She just Wait. mocked that up for me. It's not approved or anything. Uh -huh. But she just did that so we kind of get an idea. We'd say sure. Morro Bay official calendar 2020. And then with her great photos inside. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Any public comment regarding the 2020 calendar? I see thumbs up. That's a great one. <laughs> Jen, is there a way to? I know you don't want you don't want to call it an event <laughs> calendar, but um, I mean I have the calendar. I didn't realize until this moment that all the events are on it. <laughs> so um, it's and that's such a powerful reason to have it um, for the reason we just talked about with uh, helping with communication and all the rest so is there some way that we could work the work the word event onto the onto the actual title page so she had it on there and from a marketing thought I took it off because if I'm in a retail store and I'm buying a Christmas gift I would want to get a destination mm -hmm. calendar not a list of events. It was my I know. Gut. I agree. That I don't think it would be official it. event calendar wouldn't make sense. But we maybe could say including include events in Morro Bay or yeah, we yeah, can like something. make a kind of a node to that. But I don't I don't know that I'd put it in the name. I'm worried it will Yeah. Am I overthinking it? What what does the subtext say above twenty twenty? I can't read it. A, is that just Greek or it says a collection Greek? of Morro Bay images by local photographer okay. Dana. So we could say and events, yeah, or, you know, event listings, or yeah. like totally. Maybe yeah. we can use our that. hashtag in there somehow. Put our the, it'll be inside, yeah, for sure. I mean, the content <laughs> could be, you know, to the point that was made earlier in public comment. Thank you. People come for experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, they're not buying an art book, right? So that descriptor is more like the descriptor you'd have for an art book. So you know, it, more the sights, the sounds, the events of Morro Bay. You know, or my first thought was Morro Bay lifestyle calendar. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, enjoy our yeah. lifestyle, come and be part of our life, and a more experience and experience that lifestyle. Yeah, more experiential. Content. And I'll I'll bring it back when she gets it all pulled together, and we'll review the whole content. But this was strictly conceptually. Do we want to give her three thousand dollars to be sponsor yeah. of this? Yeah, sounds good. I was just going to say what we probably should do is connect the 2020 with the word calendar. So it should probably say 2020 calendar, mm -hmm. and then you can say whatever else. Yeah. So did I hear right? This is going to come back to us again? Okay. Awesome. All right, so moved. I second. Any other comment? No. Call for a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Looking good for 2020. Looking good in 2020. Yeah. With that, um, I would like to see, is there any declaration of any future agenda items coming at you? Seeing none, I'm going to call this meeting adjourned at 1129. I want to thank everybody for coming. Public comment, thank you. And um, thank you again. Have a great weekend.